How often have you heard the term godly woman? And what does it really mean to be a godly woman? It might sound very cliche or idealistic, but we can better understand this concept of a godly woman with the help of scripture. Because only scripture can define a godly woman. Not an Instagram post, not a talk show or movie, but scripture. Scripture defines a godly woman. We have to look at what the Bible says. We need to specifically look at and know what God's purpose was when he created woman. And then we also need to look at the examples we have in the Bible of the godly women mentioned. Now, simply put, a godly woman is a woman after God's own heart. This means she knows, she has knowledge, she has an understanding of who God is, and she craves for him. She longs to be in his presence. She abides in him always. There is a hunger about her when it comes to the things of the Lord. Secondly, she knows who she is as a daughter of God. She knows her identity in Christ. And finally, she is aligned with God's will and purpose for her life. There is no wandering. There's no aimless decisions with her. She is forever moving towards the call of God in her life. So those are just three examples of the characteristics that a godly woman has. She's devoted to chasing the Lord. She knows who she is, meaning she's not defined by her profile pic, by her followers or anything like that. She knows that she is a daughter of God. And finally, she is aligned. That's the key word, aligned, meaning she is lined up with God's will. But there is more. We have to look at what the Word of God says about being a godly or virtuous woman. So let's explore some of the references made about women in Scripture, starting with the first woman ever created, Eve. Genesis chapter 2 provides us with some insight into God's intent in creating the woman. After God created the creatures, he saw that for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. That's when he decided to form the woman from one of Adam's ribs. From this, we can be confident in saying that one of the characteristics of a godly woman is to be a helper. This does not mean God's intention was for women to be passive or weak. On the contrary, he knew that only the addition of a woman could complete this creation. None of the other creatures qualified as helpers to Adam because there were not any equal or comparable to him nor made in God's image. And note this, the woman was formed from one of Adam's ribs, not his feet, because she is not to be walked over, not his head, because she is not better than him, but his rib. His rib meaning she is beside him. So how can you and I as women be good helpers in a godly sense? Do we have to be married or have kids in order to fulfill this role? Not necessarily, although some of these roles do allow women to display this characteristic very well. We can help others by placing God and others before ourselves. God first, others second, ourselves third. How's that for being a godly woman? Now, this is not to say neglect yourself. It's not to say don't love yourself or don't look after yourself. It's actually to say, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul. And then love your neighbor just as you love yourself. Being a helper is to follow the example Jesus set. Because to help others is to serve others. In Matthew 20, verse 28, the Bible says, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. This role of being a helper or servant branches out to many different qualities in a woman being nurturing, compassionate, empathetic, caring, gentle, humble, selfless, obedient. While no woman is perfect, as Eve certainly wasn't, we can strive to achieve these qualities by being obedient to the Word of God, by submitting ourselves to prayer and listening to God's voice. You may be familiar with Proverbs chapter 31. Here's what verse 26 says. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. 
Therefore, God is pleased with the woman who is wise, as opposed to one who is foolish, ill-tempered, quick to judge, and does not make the right decisions. The same verse addresses the quality of kindness, which is also a fruit of the Spirit. We must display this attribute through our words as well as our actions. Nothing unkind should come out of our mouths. In the same chapter, verse 30 reads, Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord, she shall be praised. To put this in simpler terms, a woman's outward appearance is temporary, but a woman who trusts in God and allows him to lead her in his way is honored in God's eyes. So we need to examine ourselves, our habits, our tendencies, our priorities, and our lifestyle. We need to examine ourselves in all of those areas to make sure we conform to God's definition of a godly woman, not our own. The verses we mentioned in Proverbs 31 give us a glimpse into what sort of woman pleases God and is considered righteous in his eyes. However, we can dig a little deeper by looking into some of the other notable women mentioned in the Bible. There are many biblical noble women, and I'd like to point out Queen Esther, who was a distinguishable character, who displayed selflessness and strength in how she handled herself. We know in chapter 3 in the book of Esther that Haman had written a decree to kill all the Jews. Chapter 4 then reveals to us Esther's deep distress after hearing this news and after much discussion with Mordecai. She made a righteous and noble decision that would eventually save her people from imminent death and destruction. She instructed Mordecai to gather all the Jews in Shushan and to fast for three days, as she and her maids would also do before letting him know that she would approach the king, even though it was against the law, which could eventually lead to her being put to death. Talk about selflessness, courage, and complete trust in God. Her wisdom and nobility won her favor in the king's eyes, and this resulted in the king's deciding to revoke the decree written against the Jews. We women can definitely learn from Esther by sacrificing or compromising for others, and placing our trust in God, who is in control. Another admirable woman we read about is Mary, sister of Martha. We are taken into their home in chapter 10 of Luke, where Martha is preparing food to serve Jesus, while Mary sits at Jesus' feet and hears his word. After much grumbling from Martha that her sister left her alone to do the serving, Jesus answered her in verse 41. Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. This scene truly reveals what God, through his son, values in a woman and what pleases him. As Jesus explains to Martha that attentiveness to his word is more important than mere dutiful acts of tradition. As women, we can often get carried away by the demands of this world, demands which can so easily steal our focus away from God. We need to always be aware of where our focus is. And if it's not on God, we need to then refocus on him and what he is trying to advise us. Last but definitely not least is Mary, mother of Jesus, the highly favored one by God and blessed among women. At the angel Gabriel's visit and his announcement to her that she would give birth to the savior of the world, her response in Luke chapter 1, verse 38 was, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. Not only did she humble herself before God by calling herself the maidservant of the Lord, but she was perfectly obedient to God and aligned herself with his will, accepting his plan and purpose for her life and her role in the coming of the Messiah. Now that's a godly woman. Humility and obedience are highly pleasing qualities to the Lord. And we should strive for these qualities no matter where we are in life, no matter what our status in society, no matter what our job title is, or anything else. We must strive to be humble and to be obedient to God. So now that we have knowledge of the characteristics of a godly woman, I encourage you to know your worth and your identity as a daughter of God. We can wear and display these characteristics as precious jewels 
adorning ourselves in true godly beauty and therefore pleasing and honoring God in our daily lives.